let's take a look at the guns and the limitations that the guns have. As I explained in the last video, there's several power plants you can choose from. An under lever spring action forced air, like these two samples here. The first one an inexpensive one, the second one a higher priced gun. And there are the high pressure air guns or precharged pneumatics. These guns are filled from high pressure air tanks called SCBAs or self-contained breathing apparatus tanks like the ones the fire department uses. Beside the tank you need a high pressure air gauge and also a hose with a proper fitting end for either a probe or a quick fill. If you decide to shoot pistol field target you can choose from spring loaded pistols like this one here, a CO2 gun, but keep in mind most people don't use CO2 guns because the CO2 gas is affected by cold dropping in power. Then there's the PCP pistols. These guns are extremely accurate. This model here, the 1720T, is accurate as any rifle at shorter ranges. Trust me, pistol shooting is a lot harder than you would think. Most pistol shooters will modify the stocks and make them fit themselves like I've done with mine here. During the match, you might want to carry a smaller SCBA tank, especially when you're shooting pistol. These smaller tanks are much more convenient than the 60 or 90 cubic inch tanks. At most club matches, there's air supplied somewhere along the course. And at all after sanctioned matches, there's air supplied several places along the course. This is mostly because they're two or three day events. So let's review the rules for the guns. Any power plant is allowed, spring piston, nitro piston, and precharged pneumatics. Rifles must be 20 foot pounds of energy or below, and pistols must be 12 foot pounds of energy. Scopes for the hunter class must be set on 12 magnification or below. Hunter division rifles must comply with the following. The end is limited to 6 inches measured from the center of the barrel to the lowest part of the rifle, forward the trigger guard. A rifle sling is allowed, attached at only two points. No butt hooks or thigh rests are allowed. In pistol field target, your scope cannot exceed 12 magnification. If it's variable and can go above 12, you will be disqualified. The pistol's barrel is limited to 15 inches overall. That's from the breech to the end of the barrel, including a moderator or anything else that's attached. The fore end is limited to 3 inches measured from the center of the barrel to the lowest part of the gun forward of the trigger guard, and no butt stocks are allowed on the gun. As this is just the basics, I will explain open class and world field target shooting and methods how to shoot it in the next video. For now, I'll just give an overview. The restrictions for open class and world field target federation are both classes are unlimited in magnification. The open class is restricted to 20 foot-pounds or under. The world field target guns are restricted to 12 foot-pounds. Clicking is allowed in both classes. Both classes can use shooting jackets. Open class can use a harness or straps, but WFTF shooters cannot. Elbow pads and knee pads are allowed in both classes. Adjustable rifle parts are allowed but cannot be removed or added during a match. The sling is allowed in both classes except in WFTF it cannot be used when sitting. A seat pad is allowed and it must not be more than 6 inches when seated on it. It must be used as a seat except for kneeling position where it can be used to support an ankle. In both classes prone position is not allowed and no bipods are allowed. The gun must be solely supported by the shooter's body. Both classes are allowed to use a shooting glove. Now I'll go over what to expect at a match. Generally at most matches you'll be shooting into the woods. You may be totally in the woods shooting down lanes or you could be on the end of a field shooting into the woods. There you may shoot level, uphill, or even downhill. Some courses, especially at gun clubs, are set up entirely in an open field. This can especially be challenging in the summer when you're shooting from an open bright field into the dark woods. It makes target recognition much harder. Be prepared for the weather. It could be cold, it could be rainy. At most major matches, the match will not stop unless severe weather threatens the competitors. Most clubs make a contingency for rain, supplying some sort of a cover in order to keep on shooting. I recommend a loose rain outfit like the Frog Togs. Also, waterproof boots are a great idea. I practice with safety glasses, as many of the events that you go to require that you wear them. Now most folks just starting out start in hunter division. The reason being is you have a steady rest with a bipod, you can sit on a bucket, you don't have to get in a pretzel position like open or WFTF, and are generally more comfortable. 
Along the course, you'll run into two lanes that are forced positions, meaning you have to stand and shoot or kneel and shoot. You must support the rifle with both your arms and a sling is allowed. It must be attached at no more than two points. When kneeling, you can use your bum bag under your ankle or a kneeling roll. Your arm can rest on your knee. The kneeling roll or a bum bag can only be used as a support for your ankle and nothing else. WFTF shooters can use a bum bag, a shooting coat, and a glove, but can't use a harness. Open shooters have the same restrictions, with the exception they can use the harness. As a matter of fact, some open shooters only use the harness. They find it more comfortable than using the coat. Now in Hunter, there's a good bit of equipment to carry around with you, buckets and all. And some folks have inventive ways of carrying all that stuff. Now I'll explain how the targets work. Each metal target has a round hole cut in it called the kill zone. A pellet hitting the faceplate anywhere but through that hole will not do anything. Placing a pellet through that hole will make the target fall over. And that's the object of the game. Now how the match is done and the lane set up. Targets are set two or more lane. Targets are shot near to far. Some lanes are set as a shoot left to right. Normally it's two shots per target unless the match director changes it by having three in a lane or so. The string is pulled by the shooter or you can ask a squad mate if they agree on it to pull it for you. Once you finish all your lanes, your squad mate will total up your score and you hand in your paperwork. Prior to shooting, you'll be able to go to the sight in range and check out your scope, check out your gun and make sure everything is set up. These targets should be in five yard increments going from 10 yards out to 55 yards. At a pre-match meeting, the match director will give you a safety announcement. He'll cover points like keeping the muzzle pointed downrange when on the line, only load when you're ready to shoot at the targets, and if a cold lane is called, fire any loaded pellet into the ground in front of you. Stay unloaded until after the lane is called hot again. Now, a cold lane. A cold lane is called whenever there's an issue like a target sticking or a broken string on a target. The range officer will need to go down and fix the problem. Competitor will call the cold lane as soon as the problem occurs. At your own home club, you may be allowed to do this yourself. With the problem fixed, a hot lane is called and the match continues. The match director will give you how your lanes are to be shot. For instance, near to far, left to right, and how many shots per target, and how many people in the squad or any other specific rules of the course. Now how to fill out the scorecard. You and your squad mate score each other. It's a simple affair of X's and O's. The scorecard has a total lanes and you start scoring on the lane that you are assigned before the match. Like here on lane 5, the first target was missed and then the next three targets were knocked down. Totaled across for a score of 3. After the match, you total the entire right lane down and get your grand total. This is done by your squad mate and he signs the bottom of the card. Next, you hand them in to the match director. At an after sanctioned match, you'll use a 5 minute timer and sometimes at your own club. Basically, you're allotted one minute to get down, set up, and sight in, and two minutes per target. Rarely do you run the clock out. Now, you can be a serious scorekeeper like this guy, or a happy one like this fellow. Or you can just sit back and relax the score, just like this fellow. After the match is over, all the totals are put up on a board next to your name, and then awards are ready to hand out. At a local match, your club may offer out certificates as awards for doing a good job. At a regional event or other AFTA sanctioned events, usually a trophy is handed out. At the end of the season, the Nationals are held where they also give out the Grand Prix Awards, which is the total of all the major matches. Here are the winners of the 2015 Nationals held in Ennis, North Carolina by my host club, the Tar Heel Air Gun Club. Here are some of our members who came and evaluated the course prior to the 2016 Nationals. This shooting sport is addictive and you'll get caught up in it quick. My first match had my heart pumping thinking everybody was watching me. After the first couple lanes, I realized that nobody was watching me. They were scoring and shooting, paying attention only to themselves. Well, after a bit, my anxiety went away and I just concentrated on my shooting. Now I'm traveling around the eastern U.S. shooting all the major matches I can attend. Like I said, it's addictive. I just passed my first year of owning an air rifle in March of 2016. To get into the national matches, you'll find yourself rubbing elbows with some of the top shooters in the U.S. and the world. It's a lot less intimidating than you think. That's because they're general camaraderie for the sport. They're happy to give you advice, and I'll be happy to take it. 
I hope these several videos I made on the basics will take some of the mystery out of this sport. Okay, your local club is the best place to go to and check it out. Your club is a good place to relax and has some friendly fun shooting. Shooting cans in the backyard is fun, but Field Target gives you more of a challenge to sharpen your skills while having that fun. And then the crows scattered into the November gray and they never Good job.